Hello everyone, I'm Mike D'Angelo with That's Entertainment, and this is your video review of Final Fantasy XIII by Square Enix. If I asked you to name the most popular RPG series in the world, you would better say Final Fantasy. Not only is the series by far the most successful RPG franchise in North America, but it actually helped to save an entire company from bankruptcy back in 1987. Now, 12 numbered installments later, bolstered by a score of supplementary spin-offs, Square Enix has released Final Fantasy XIII. The game has been in development for years, and fans have long awaited the return to the mainstay Final Fantasy titles. But, when Final Fantasy XIII hit the market, and people learned that the series outgrew many of its traditions, how did it fare? Like most of the newer Final Fantasy titles, XIII suffers from a general lack of originality. In essence, it's the same thing as a collection of prior titles in the series, including 6, 7, and 12. The gist of the story revolves around a ragtag bunch of rebels and civilians fighting against the values of a maniacal empire. However, whereas most of those games had your characters fighting for the good of mankind or to save the world, Final Fantasy XIII provides your characters a much more personal focus. Complete a task or be cursed to run the world as a monster forever. The characters are varied in presentation. Some appear on the scene and are very unlikable from the beginning, but begin to grow on you. Some teen angst and cowardice gets in the way of character development for a while, but for the most part, you begin to connect with the people under your control. The world of Pulse in the city of Cocoon needs heroes, and your characters fit the bill. Branded with the mark of the ill sea, they must follow vague instructions from their dreams, or else endanger their entire existence. Over the course of the first three hours of play, you are introduced to five of the main characters. Lightning is an ex-soldier, trying to fight her way to one of the False Sea, a godlike being with immense powers. She's trying to save her sister, Sarah, who has been marked as an LC. Snow is Sarah's fiancé, and is trying in his own way to rescue her, despite Lightning's disapproval. Lightning is accompanied by Sazah, a former airship pilot who has his own reasons for aiding the group in their initial assault on the False Sea. Also complimenting the group is Hope, who witnessed as Snow dropped his mother to her death, and blames him for it. He travels with Vanille, an upbeat yet stubborn young girl who has a secret of her own. Together, they just may have the power to save Cocoon, or utterly destroy it. There are plenty of changes that are apparent in Final Fantasy XIII. Some of these may seem like a breath of fresh air to some, while to others, things might seem a little too different. If you thought the Gambit system of Final Fantasy XII was confusing, wait till you get a load of the Paradigm system in XIII. Instead of painstakingly creating a collection of parameters for your party to follow, you select from one of several preset roles for multiple characters on the fly. This is important because the fights have a very quick pace, which is also the reason that you are only charged with controlling one character at any given time. Doling out commands to your character is a little foreign as well. Instead of waiting for a bar to fill to allow you to utilize any ability at will, you are given command slots, which you use by selecting a combination of actions that you unleash at your enemy at one time. Because of this change, MP is no longer necessary for the game. Rather, each of the commands have their own cost points, denoting how many command slots they sap away with each use. Things can be a little confusing, but the game does a good job of giving you pieces of the game engine in chunks. Even then, however, Final Fantasy XIII takes a long while to learn and an even longer time to truly begin to master. One of the more startling changes of the game is the decision to remove levels and experience from the game entirely. Instead, Final Fantasy XIII is given something that resembles a combination of the Sphere Grid from the 10th game and the License Board from the 12th. This way of upgrading your character, called the Crystarium, can be very complicating, especially since the game locks you out of some of the content until later in the game. While navigating the system is a little awkward, the techniques and stat buffs that you get from the Crystarium are fairly intuitive in the field. Another one of the changes in the game that may leave some baffled is the decision to press the game towards linearity. Gone are Towns is a place to go to rest at an inn and gain information to point you towards your next objective. You don't need an inn anymore since your characters heal between every battle. And you don't need information anymore, seeing as the mini-map directs you more clearly than any villager ever would. The game isn't plagued with this one-size-fits-all route throughout the game, though you do have to put up with it until far into the narrative. Final Fantasy XIII is, without a doubt, the most beautiful RPG thus far in gaming. My only gripes with the presentation are small ones. A testy camera causes some minor delay in progress while you try to set it in the right direction at some times. Certain portions of CGI action sequences rush by in a Transformers-esque way, causing you to miss out on a lot of fine details. Finally, the game, which has been built to embrace a fast pace, is slowed down before battles, taking away from the strides that its predecessor had made. 
For the most part, the music is a little weaker than previous installments, though it is still serviceable. The sound is typical Final Fantasy fare, although it does cater more to sci-fi than most of the other games. If you listen hard enough, you'll swear you heard a lightsaber in some scenes. The voice work is generally hit or miss, and will depend a lot on your personal taste. Some of the dialogue is annoying as sin, while other acting is very engaging and realistic. It's an out -out massacre. Those people... What are you doing? With Final Fantasy XIII, so you could end up dumping a lot of time into creating your characters in a variety of different ways. The weapons that you can equip them with also benefit from upgrades. Besides that, though, until you've put dozens of hours into Final Fantasy XIII, the game's linearity saps away most replayability. Once you get to that point, though, tons of side quests open up and you can spend a good deal of time trying to ace all your fights. Guess it's just us. What did you expect? Square Enix is a filthy rich company. As such, they can afford to take risks like the ones they took with this 13th main installment in, arguably, their most prestigious franchise. Because of some bold design choices, many of the long-standing fans of the series may be off-put. But, taken as its own game and not as part of the series that usually stays fairly safe and unchanged, it still manages to shine to some extent. Because of the vast differences from Final Fantasy XIII and its predecessors, it may be a good idea to test the waters before you dive in. But, chances are, you will still find a way to enjoy this game. That's Entertainment Awards Final Fantasy XIII, a score of 9 out of 10. It's over! Open your eyes and face reality! <laughs>